China produces more than 80% of all the world's polysilicon, what solar panels are made from. And it's not an irrelevant point to note that they do that by using coal-fired electricity, because making solar polysilicon is extraordinarily energy intensive. So China is doing it with, uh, we're reportedly uh, slave labor, but let's, let's set that aside and just look at the energy issues, which is they use coal to make it, and we use diesel fuel to transport it, and we import it. We're a net importer of almost everything relevant with respect to, to anything that's so-called green energy, whether it's key components of wind turbines, um, solar panels, of course, and all the key materials and minerals that make batteries for electric cars, in which China also utterly and completely dominates. And Jeez. Indeed, now, China... Go, sorry. Now, one, one, of the things, one of the things that the White House said in response today, in one of the reports on this, was that, oh, well, this is all good because this is going to get us faster or more reliably to the 2035 <laughs> zero-carbon world they're trying to create. Yeah. How realistic is that? And I know you've done great stuff for PragerU on this. Yeah. Right. Well, let's just, uh, not to put a fine point on it either, the zero carbon world by 2035 has 0% chance of happening. I mean, we've, the world has spent more than $5 trillion, probably closer to $10 trillion over the last two decades to avoid using hydrocarbons, oil, natural gas, and coal. And that's resulted in a two percentage point reduction in the share of world energy coming from hydrocarbons. And solar and wind today combined supply about 3% of world energy. This is not, I mean, trillions of dollars are not going to make any difference to delinking the world from hydrocarbons. In fact, as of right now, 95% of all things that move in the world, all the machines that move people and goods are powered by oil. Well, at least Venezuela and Saudi Arabia will be able to produce it. We're headed toward an exciting all renewable energy future. Wind and solar will power the world of tomorrow. And tomorrow isn't far off. It's time to wake up. You're having a dream. Here's the reality. Oil, natural gas, and coal provide 84% of all the world's energy. That's down just two percentage points from 20 years ago. And oil still powers nearly 97% of all global transportation. Contrary to headlines claiming that we're rapidly transitioning away from fossil fuels, it's just not happening. Two decades and $5 trillion of governments investing in green energy, and we've barely moved the needle. This was supposed to be easy. Why is it so hard? In a word, rocks. To get the same amount of energy from solar and wind that we now get from fossil fuels, we're going to have to massively increase mining by more than 1,000%. This isn't speculation. This is physics. Copper, iron ore, silicon, nickel, chromium, zinc, cobalt, lithium, graphite, and rare earth metals like neodymium. We need them all. And then those metals and materials have to be turned into motors, turbine blades, solar panels, batteries, and hundreds of other industrial components. That also takes lots of energy, which requires even more mining. As a World Bank study put it, these green technologies are in fact significantly more material intensive than our current energy mix. That may be the understatement of the century. Raw materials account for 50 to 70% of the costs to manufacture both solar panels and batteries. Until now, it hasn't really mattered that much because wind and solar still account for only a few percentage points of the global energy supply. They're an applause line for environmentalists, not a major energy player, and it's unlikely they will be in the foreseeable future. But for the sake of argument, let's say we sharply ramp up mining. Where would these new mines be located? Well, for one, China. That country is today the single largest source of most of our critical energy materials. The United States is not only a minor player, but is dependent on imports for 100% of 17 critical minerals. Do we want to give China more political and economic leverage? Europe has made itself dependent on Russia for 40% of its natural gas. How well has that worked out? Ironically, we have all the minerals we need right here in North America but good luck trying to get them out of the ground. Proposals to build mines in the United States and increasingly almost everywhere else meet fierce opposition, if not outright bans. To give just one example, in 2022, the Biden administration canceled a proposed copper and nickel mine in Northern Minnesota. This was after years of delays navigating a maze of environmental regulations. 
And yes, the same environmentalists and green-leaning politicians who tout all the benefits of electric cars are the same people who make mining the materials essential to build those cars, like copper and nickel, all but impossible. Try to square that circle. So far, we've only talked about today's energy needs. What about tomorrow's? Future energy demand will be far greater than today's. That's been true for the entire history of civilization. The future will not only have more people, but also more innovations. And entrepreneurs have always been better at inventing new ways to use energy than to produce it. It's obvious, but worth stating, before the invention of automobiles, airplanes, pharmaceuticals, or computers, there was no energy needed to power them. And as more people become more prosperous, they will want the things others already have, from better medical care to vacations to cars. In America, there are about 80 cars for every 100 citizens. In most of the world, it's about five per 100 citizens. Over 80% of air travels for personal purposes. So that's 2 billion barrels of oil a year. Hospitals use 250% more energy per square foot than an average commercial building. And the global information infrastructure, the cloud, already uses twice as much electricity as the entire country of Japan, the world's third largest economy. The massive data centers at the heart of the cloud alone consume almost 10 times more electricity than the world's 10 million electric cars. E-commerce has taken off and it's propelling record growth in warehouses, increasingly filled with energy-hungry robots. America's truck freight index more than doubled in the past decade to deliver the goods to and from those warehouses. These are today's known trends. While we can't predict the future, we can predict there'll be more innovation in robotics, drones, quantum computing, biotechnology, and new industries not yet imagined. All of it will require more energy, a lot more. Fossil fuels, nuclear energy, and yes, renewables will be required. But if you think we could get it all from wind and solar, dream on. I'm Mark Mills, Senior Fellow at the Manhattan Institute for Prager University.